please pause the video and reread the question if you haven't done so already. In part A, our task is to draw a force diagram for the beam, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now because there is a bear standing on the beam, the weight of the bear is going to press down on the beam. The beam itself has its own weight, which acts right at the center. We have a basket of goodies hanging down, and so there's a weight there as well. There's a tension force that's pulling upward to try to counteract these downward forces. And then over here, it turns out there are two forces. The question itself gives us a hint as to that. It asks us in part B to find the components of the force exerted by the wall on the left end of the beam. So the wall is actually exerting forces over here. And it turns out that these forces are acting this way and also upward. And if that's hard to fathom, just keep this in mind. The beam is being pushed into the wall, so the wall actually will push back to the right on the beam. And then also the beam is trying to slip down the wall, and as a result, the wall, perhaps through friction, will be pointing upward, uh, will be pointing a force upward, excuse me. So here we have it. We should probably label all these forces with their numerical values when given. And then we might call this H for a horizontal force and V for a vertical force, and part A is complete. In part B, the first question asks us to find the tension in the wire that's supporting the beam. And it turns out in order to do that, we're going to use the concept that the sum of the torques is equal to zero. Now this basically means, or this basically applies when an object is not rotating. And so certainly the beam here is not rotating, so therefore the sum of the torques will equal zero. Now the formula for torque is equal to a force times a distance times the sine of an angle. And to get a better understanding of what's going on here, we're going to have to choose what we call a pivot point. And a pivot point is best selected on the object, so in this case it's the beam, and you want to position the pivot at the point through which the greatest number of unknown forces passes. I'll say that again. You want to place the pivot on the beam at a point through which the greatest number of unknown forces is passing. Now notice right here there are two unknown forces passing through that point. H and V, and therefore it would be the best choice to put the pivot there. The reason we do that is because those two unknown forces will produce no torque through that pivot point, so we can ignore them in the formula. A couple of other points to note is that all three of the downward acting forces are producing negative torques, and the reason for that is because they're trying to pull the beam in a clockwise fashion, and clockwise in physics is negative. And the tension, on the other hand, is trying to rotate the beam in the anti-clockwise direction, and as a result, the torque for that force will be positive. Now that we've settled those points, let's go ahead and fill in the information into the torque equation using F times D times sine of theta. Remember that D will be the distance from the pivot to each force. So all of these distances here will be the Ds when we plug them into the formula. And we might as well go ahead and label them. So this was one meter, this was three meters, and this was six meters. So here it is, just notice that each term in the equation is an F times a D times a sine of theta. And I wanna point out that most of the thetas are 90 degrees. You can see them right there. The reason is that those forces that are acting downward are acting perpendicular to the beam, and so their angles are 90 degrees. On the other hand, this force, the tension force, is acting at a 60 degree angle, which was actually stated in the problem. So if you look at this formula carefully, you'll notice you have only one unknown, and that's T. So we can go ahead and solve for T. And when doing so, you should get 343 newtons. If you have any questions about that algebra, please let me know in the comments. Now part B still wants us to find other things. It wants us to find the force components exerted by the wall. So in other words, we have to find H and V. Let's start with H, which is acting in the horizontal direction. And in order to solve for H, we're gonna use the idea that the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction or X direction is equal to zero. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in those forces. We only have a couple of forces in the horizontal direction. We have H, which is pointing to the right and is therefore positive. And then we have the X component of the tension. Recall that the tension can be broken up into components. You have an X component pointing to the left and then a Y component is pointing upward. We just want the X component for the current analysis here. And that would be the tension times the cosine of 60. Because it's pointing to the left, we have to make sure we make that negative. So it's minus tension cosine 60, but we just found the tension in the previous question. So we can actually go ahead and plug in the tension that we had found, and then we can easily solve for this H force.
and it turns out to be 172 newtons and it's pointing to the right of course. Now to find the V force, which is also what part B wants, we're going to do a similar analysis except we'll apply this Newton's second law in the Y direction. Now there are many more forces acting in the Y than in the X and we can see that there are three downward forces, so those will all be negative. We have the upward V force, so that'll be positive. And then we have the Y component of the tension and that's pointing upward and so that too will be positive. And that'll be T sine of 60. Now again, we know T, so why don't we actually just back up and plug in T. We found it earlier to be 343 and then we have sine of 60 and that's set equal to zero. So we have only one known once again and we can solve for it. And that turns out to be 683 newtons upward. And part B is complete. Now in part C of the question, we're actually being told that the tension is 900 newtons. It's not an unknown, unlike it was in part B. But what is unknown is the distance that the bear is traveling. So basically we're going to be using the same free body diagram, except that this time the tension is known to be 900 newtons, and the distance that the bear is walking out is unknown. So we'll just call that X. Otherwise the diagram is the same, and we can use the same analysis that we did in part B, that the sum of the torques is equal to zero, keeping the pivot at this point right here, because that's the point through which the greatest number of unknown forces passes. So we're basically setting up the same torque formula, we're just having different values plugged in for a couple terms. So let's go ahead and set that up. Notice once again that most of the torques are negative, it's because those downward forces are trying to rotate the beam in a clockwise fashion. Also note that we have just one variable to solve for, it's x, so we can go ahead and do so. And we get 5.14 meters, so that would be the distance that the bear could walk out. 